Thank you for joining the Episcopal Church of Our Savior of Madison County as we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter on May 24th. On this day, the Lord has acted and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our opening hymn is hymn number 529, in Christ There Is No East or West, sung by Alan Fryer. In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. Join hands, disciples of the faith, whatever your race may be. Who serves my father as his child is surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise to hear his holy word and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord. Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the words of the Jubiliat. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10, and verses 33 through 36. Let us say together the psalm responsibly by whole verse. Let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. 
But let the righteousness be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom but the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O oh God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath stay journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The second lesson is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, 
because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to all who you gave to me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I no longer, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse, chapter 17, verse 3. This is one of the great verses of the New Testament. It provides valuable insight for understanding the meaning of eternal life. This is something that we've all thought about at one point or another, especially as we've gotten older. We've wondered about what awaits us when we depart this earthly life. Perhaps you've heard of the theologians Paul Tillich and Karl Barth. They were two of the most influential Protestant theologians of the 20th century. When Paul Tillich died, some of his friends called Karl Barth Barth to share the sad news that he had died. Karl Barth responded, well, now he knows. What heaven is like is not something for us to know about, at least not on this side of the veil. On the Feast of Ascension, which was observed on Thursday in our church, we take time to think about heaven. It's one of the seven principal feasts of the church. 
The ascension of Jesus is described in Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 58, and in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. After offering his final words of advice and blessing his disciples, Jesus ascended into heaven. Jesus is there now and will be forever. That heavenly place is not for Jesus alone. In the Collect for Ascension Day, we pray to Almighty God, saying, As we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so we may also in heart and mind there ascend and with him continually dwell. This prayer is grounded in the Christian hope that we'll all be with the Lord one day in that better place for which ultimately we are destined. In the beautiful words of that old prayer meeting him, we will understand it better by and by, by and by, by and by when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home. We'll tell the story how we've overcome, for we'll understand it better by and by, by and by. As Christians, we embrace this wonderful mystery of faith and we rejoice in the promises of God. We strive to follow Jesus as best we can by doing what he has taught us with the hope that we'll one day see Jesus in heaven. This brings us back to the meaning of eternal life. The dictionary defines the word eternal as meaning without beginning or end, existing through all time, everlasting. We tend to think of eternal life as life without end. In today's scripture from the Gospel of John, Jesus defines eternal life as knowing God and Jesus Christ. When the Last Supper was over, Jesus prayed to God for his disciples, saying, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Then Jesus and his disciples went into a garden in the Kidron Valley where Jesus was arrested. Jesus defined eternal life as knowing God and Jesus Christ. The process of knowing God and Jesus Christ begins in our own earthly lives and continues into eternity. In this way, the essential character of eternal life is, has more to do with our relationship with God and with Jesus than with duration and time. Jesus explained that he had glorified God on earth by finishing the work that God had given him to do. He glorified God by his obedience, his public honoring of the Father, and his work in the name of the Father. At the Last Supper, Jesus' hour had come and his work would be concluded with his death, resurrection, and ascension. Jesus had made the Father's name known to his disciples and others who had followed him. In that culture and time, a person's name meant the whole nature and character of the person insofar as it could be known. The expression to know God is a common expression found in the Old Testament thought. Seeking God meant the same thing as seeking to know God. It was believed that knowledge of God was necessary for true life. So what does it mean to know God? In part, it means to know what God is like. Knowledge of God makes all the difference in our lives and in the world. For example, it makes a tremendous difference to know that God is not stern and judgmental, but is compassionate, merciful, and loving. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 7-8, through 8, John says, Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. This fundamental truth that God is love was understood and embraced by Fred Rogers, the host of the beloved children's program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He was an ordained minister of the United Presbyterian Church. He once said, When I think about heaven, 
It's a state in which we are so greatly loved that there is no fear and doubt and disillusionment and anxiety. It is where people really do look at you with those eyes of Jesus. Death is not something to be feared. As Jesus mused, as Fred Rogers mused, frankly, I think that after we die, we have this wide understanding of what's real and will probably say, ah, so that's what it was all about. We will never have known that God is love unless Jesus had come to tell us and show us the way of love. Through the life and ministry of Jesus, we discover what God is like. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for our salvation. Jesus so loved God's people that he offered himself in absolute obedience as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. It's all about love. Out of love for his disciples, Jesus prayed to his father, saying, Protect them in your name that you have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. Jesus prayed that they may be united as one in the same way that Jesus and his Father God were one. We become united together as the one people of God when we seek to know God. We become united in our prayer and ministry as Christians when we work together to realize God's kingdom on earth. Fred Rogers also said that he believed that upon entering heaven, we would have eyes that see what is wonderful about our neighbor, eyes that can see the invisible, the essential in one another. As Christians, we're called to see one another and our neighbors with loving eyes. We become united when we show God's love in all that we say and do and we act in ways that unite rather than divide people. The Feast of the Ascension is not simply a bon voyage to Jesus. It's not focused only heavenward. It concerns the earthly dimension of the here and now and how we live our lives in light of our knowledge of God and Jesus Christ until God's kingdom comes. We're called to be disciples of Jesus. After witnessing the Lord's ascension into heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem. We're told in Acts that the disciples and his women followers constantly devoted themselves to prayer and continued their ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus assured his disciples that he wouldn't leave them comfortless. He said that they would receive assistance in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Next Sunday, on the Feast of the Pentecost, in a diocesan-wide virtual gathering, we'll joyfully celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God with us after Jesus returned to his heaven, his Father. God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. God has also given us one another as fellow pilgrims on the journey of faithful living. Let us love God and one another and our neighbors as we journey together and build the kingdom of God on earth. Amen. Let us say together our statement of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will use Suffragist Set A on page 97 of the Book of Common Prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. You are saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Seventh Sunday of Easter. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A Collect for Sunday. O God, you made us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of your life, we may not forget you, that, but we remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for when we cannot attend worship. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. Proclaim your resurrection and await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, in you and me, and in this life and the life to come. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplication and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite your prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving at this time. Gracious and loving God, we pray for all those who have died. May they rise in glory and rest in peace, and may you comfort their friends and family in their grief. We pray, dear Lord, for peace, for well-being, for joy in this world. We pray, dear Lord, that others may come to know you and your unconditional love. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity Church Danville, the Reverend Amy Daffler Moe, Rector. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, Anglican Communion Sunday, pray for all members of the Anglican Communion around the world, for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby, and all primates and bishops, 
for members of the Anglican Consultative Council, for the Secretary General, the Most Reverend Dr. Joshua I. Don Fenton, for the staff at the Anglican Communion Office in London and the UN offices in Geneva and New York. Let us pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to, to whom, whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is hymn number 495, Hail Thou Once Despised Jesus. Hail thou who once despised Jesus, hail thou who Galilean King. Thou didst suffer to release us, thou didst free salvation bring. Hail thou who universal Saviour, bearer of our sin and shame. By thy merit we find favour, life is given through thy name. Paschal Lamb, by God appointed, all our sins on thee were laid. By Almighty Love anointed, thou hast full atonement made. All thy people are forgiven through the virtue of thy blood. Opened is the gate of heaven, reconciled are we with God. Jesus, hail, enthroned in glory, there forever to abide. All the heavenly hosts adore thee, seated at thy Father's side. Therefore, sinners, thou art pleading, there thou dost our place prepare, ever for us interceding, till in glory we appear. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Blessings to all of you as I keep you in my thoughts, heart, and prayers. And please join us next Sunday as we celebrate the glorious coming of the Holy Spirit on the Feast of Pentecost. Have a blessed week and stay well.